I've noticed that Bib and his companions have been promoting this on his Discord channel. This is Dave Weiss's Flatter Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Of course, there's a certain irony in this because Bib and his companions claim that we aren't flat earthers, and yet Dave Weiss is one of the big names in the flat earth community. So what I want to do is take a look at this app because one of its features is that it shows the movement of the sun on a flat earth during the different seasons. This is the sun over the Tropic of Capricorn during the December solstice, over the equator during the equinox, and over the Tropic of Cancer during the June solstice. And since we just had the December solstice, let's take a look and see how this matches real-world observations. So here's the sun on its path above the Tropic of Capricorn. And Dave's app is correct because it shows the same solar time along longitude lines. So I'm going to take a look at two different locations which are along longitude 75 degrees west, which is right here. And I'm using the Gleason's map since it's a little more clear exactly what we are looking at. So you can see that this longitude cuts across the east coast of the United States here and across the west coast of South America. And also I have highlighted the Tropic of Capricorn. And like Day's app, I have added the 24 hours of the day, which are represented by every 15 degrees of longitude with solar noon down here at the bottom. So first we're gonna take a look at New York City, which is only at 74 degrees west, but close enough for this comparison. This is from timeanddate.com for New York City. This is December 21st, and here we have the times of sunrise, solar noon, and sunset. Now you can see that local time, there's a six minute difference between this and 12 o'clock, so I'm not gonna change any of these times, they're close enough. But here would be sunrise at 7.16 in the morning and sunset at 4.31 in the afternoon. And the length of the day is nine hours and 15 minutes which of course is the shortest day of the year for New York City. These two black arrows represent the approximate direction that sunrise and sunset would be seen from New York. And if we put a compass at the location of New York, we can see that on a flat earth, sunrise would be seen a little bit north of due east and sunset would be a little bit north of due west. Of course, this is already a fail for the flat Earth because sunrise is actually seen much farther to the south at 121 degrees east-southeast, and sunset is also seen much farther to the south at 239 degrees west-southwest. The second location is Punta Arenas, Chile in the Southern Hemisphere. The longitude is 70.9 degrees west, so it's a little bit farther east than New York, but still close enough for the purpose of this video. Again, from timeanddate.com, on the 21st of December, we have sunrise, solar noon, and sunset. Now in this case, you can see that solar noon is not even close to 12 o'clock, and this is a combination of Punta Arenas being a little bit farther to the east, and also because of its time zone. So what I'm gonna do is subtract an hour and 41 minutes from this time, which will give me 12 o'clock, or noon. I'm also making the same adjustment for sunrise, so instead of 5.12 in the morning, it will be 3.31 in the morning. And also for sunset, instead of at 10.11 in the evening, it will be at 8.30. So these are the adjusted times. And on the flat earth map, that would put sunrise way up here at 3.30, and of course sunset way up here at 8.30. And the length of the day on the 21st for Punta Arenas is almost 17 hours at 16 hours and 58 minutes. And of course, this is because it is summertime in Punta Arenas and this is the longest day of the year. And again, these black arrows represent the approximate direction of where sunrise and sunset would be observed from Punta Arenas. 
And when we put a compass at the location of Punta Arenas, we can see that if the Earth was flat, both sunrise and sunset would be seen way up towards the north. But what they actually observed is in the opposite direction towards the south. Sunrise is seen at 133 degrees to the southeast, and sunset is seen at 227 degrees to the southwest. This is another big failure for the flat Earth. And if you have ever been south of the Tropic of Capricorn and paid attention to the world around you, you would know that this is the actual observed sun path. It is not around the North Pole like is seen in the Northern Hemisphere. It is in the complete opposite direction around the South Pole. And I have been there and I have seen this with my own eyes. This is also confirmed by the suncalc.org website. And what is nice about this website is that this graphic right here will show you the path of the sun from any location for any day of the year. And here I highlighted the path of the sun with this dotted line for Punta Arenas on the 21st of December. And for your information, there's also another graphic right here, this curved one. This is going to be for the coming partial solar eclipse. It's right up here, which will be on the 30th of April next year. So how accurate was the Flat Earth model at predicting sunrise and sunset on the 21st of December? Well, it wasn't really that close for New York City. It was in the complete opposite direction from Punta Arenas, Chile. And you gotta ask a simple question. Here we have the same day and basically the same longitude. So if the sun can be seen this far north from Punta Arenas, why can't it also be seen that far north from New York? Of course, I think this is one of the reasons that the Flat Earthers now claim that they don't have either a map or a model, because both are reification fallacies that cannot explain anything that we observe. Of course, they can always find solace at their altar of the black swan icon. And finally, this is easily explained on the globe model due to axial tilt.